John! You're heading into the blackout, so I won't be able to see you until you leave. But don't worry, I can still sense you're there. Because of awesome powers, remember? Smooth move ditching your computer like that, by the way. That was some incredible leadership you showed. Now I have to contact you through Rose, thus exposing me to the risk of actually having to talk to her. Your carelessness has put the Heroes of Light in a very awkward position, John. I hope you're satisfied. <laughs> Just kidding. She's obviously a little too preoccupied at the moment to be sassing me. Just borrow her computer and talk to me when you get the chance, okay? I will be waiting. Dot, 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 dot. Dot, dot, dot. Dot, 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 times eight. Dot, 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 times eight, 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 times eight! All of the dots, John. All 16.777216 million of them. Still dead, huh? Or are you too busy weeping over her corpse to pick up that headset and answer me? You can't fool me, John. I know you are not staying dead for long. And it is not just because I can clearly see you're alive in the future. You see, we are both the best there is, and therefore we have special privileges when it comes to mortality. It's hard to keep a god dead for good. We can only die under very specific circumstances, didn't I mention? Nothing too glorious about the way you just died, I bet. Let me guess, even after all my lessons, you allowed yourself to get sucker-stabbed, right? Pretty lame. I mean, lucky for you it was lame. I guess being lame pays off when dying a hero's what gets you killed. If our hero of breath reached God dear, he would have been completely indestructible, lol. Damn, I forgot, I was going to stop ripping on that guy since he got stabbed through the chest and died. <laughs> whoops. Anyway, I figure you're probably safe from a just death, too, since I'm pretty sure you haven't done anything all that despicable. Yet. Stop. I don't know for sure, but I'm betting that if I go to fight Jack, it'll wipe out all the bad things I've done. I think if I die, it'll be a hero's death, so it ought to stick. Pretty good motivation to win the fight, though, don't you think? One way or another, I think this will be my last big challenge as a gamer. As such, I would like to pass my dice on to you. It is very important to me that they stay in good hands, John, that you continue their legacy and that of my ancestor. Eight to the eighth. Use the code. I'm sure I can count on you to make something awesome with it. Slick, I am serious. Please stop. Still not alive yet? Man, you better hurry up. She probably doesn't have much time left. Trust me, what she's going through on Durst right now isn't much fun. Okay, I guess I should mention why I'm trying to contact you now of all times, rather than just skipping ahead. Remember how we talked about your backup plan? The one you have devised to defeat Jack in the off chance I fail? Well, it's not going to work if Rose is dead, is it? You have to wake her up. Breathe some life into her. Do the windy thing with your lips. You know what that means. Oh my. Gotta kiss her. Don't worry, I still can't see you, so there is no reason to be bashful or anything. And since we are a couple of professionals here who are focused on winning, we both know it doesn't have any meaning. It's not like I would be jealous even if I could see. Why would I be? Or maybe that didn't even cross your mind. <laughs> Man, why am I even talking about this? Oh my, oh my, oh my. This will not do at all. 
let's just forget I said that. This isn't really how I wanted this conversation to go. I guess I was assuming you'd be talking back by now, so now I'm just talking and talking and spinning my wheel device like an idiot. Maybe I don't actually know how I wanted it to go. I guess I could just shut up and skip ahead on your timeline a little, talk to you when you're alive. That would make sense. So I guess I will do that. But then, maybe if I did, I wouldn't actually say what I wanted to say, so I will just say it. Pardon me while I adjust the narrow fenestrated wall. To be honest, I am nervous about this fight. But I'm still going through with it for a lot of reasons. To save my friends, or at least the ones who are still alive. Oh, and I guess to save reality itself from being totally fucked up, there's that too. But I think what's motivating me to win this fight the most is the possibility of getting to meet you when it's all over. Maybe I can finally put all this terrible stuff behind me. And I won't have to worry about being the best anymore, or proving what a ruthless killer I can be. Maybe I can try out whatever is supposed to be normal for a human. Who knows, it might not be as boring as it sounds. Maybe, if you're not too freaked out by all the bad things I've done, or the fact that I'm an alien, we could go on a date? To redirect the view from this impropriety, Oh, goodness. Don't worry, it could be a human date, whatever that entails. No weird alien stuff, I promise. And no killing or murders, or even talking about killing or murders and such. Just whatever you like to talk about and think is cool. I could even be persuaded to watch more of your absurd human films. Do you like any others which feature that rugged human with the long hair and wounded arm? You know the one, the sweaty guy with the mutilated animal and the speech impediment. Those would be tolerable to watch, I bet. There. Well, uh, think it over. Before I go, I'll get in touch one more time later on when you're alive and maybe have something to say about it. Oh yeah. Sorry about your adult male guardian. I wasn't trying to be deceptive by not telling you. I decided not to because I didn't want to be the one to make you sad about it. Was that selfish of me? I don't know. You would have found out regardless, like we all did. There are things we care about that we just have to leave behind. It just sucks for those who aren't in as much a hurry to leave it all behind as me. Wait, someone's coming. Hang on. Shoo! I am a wonderful chaperone, as well as an excellent host. Oh god, she's wearing her RP outfit. What the hell is she up to? Man, she's got her dumb dragon doll and everything. Guess she means business this time. Damn it, I've gotta go deal with this now. Anyway, if you actually get around to reading any of this, thanks for listening, John. If my outrageously great luck has any say in the matter, we will be meeting up in no time. Just please consider what I said. Okay, later. Tick. Talk. Tick. Baseball time zero combo. Oh, for crying out loud. Slick, I can tolerate many things from a guest. Curt manners, egregious womanizing, murdering the help, casual arson, even atrocious candy bowl etiquette. But it is the desecration of a priceless timepiece where I must draw the line. I'm afraid I must now insist that you take your beating quite personally. 
break! Friska, wait! Ugh, hold on. Hey, are you there? I did what you said, but I can't tell if it works. Hello? You didn't fly off and fight Jack yet, did you? I, I hope not. Anyway, all that stuff you said sounds fun to me. I have hells of cage flakes in my library. I don't even care if you're an alien. You see, cage is a universal constant which unites us all. Well, if you haven't flown away, I'll look forward to your message in the future. It would be nice to talk about all the stuff that happened. Anyway, bye. Oh god. Hey! Oh my fucking hell. This is so insanely awkward and sad. What is? Hang on. Hey! Hey. Carcat, that was you? Where's Friska? She... She... what? Shit. I feel like an asshole for reading this whole thing. What whole thing? You mean, what she wrote? Yeah. Why are you snooping around her computer? Because... Wow. Okay. So, let me ask. Did you both actually like each other? Um... Like, I mean, something vaguely resembling actual, genuine, mutual sentiment or whatever? Not some lopsided, pining bullshit? What are you talking about? Did you like her, you windsock-headed shitmouth? Is what I'm asking. Well, yeah, why? Okay, that's fine. Then we'll talk about it later. Talk about what? I need you to be able to think straight. We have important shit to go over, and I don't have much time. And so on. All right. Like what? Plans. What plans? Never mind that. First, get out of the fucking blackout to a place where I can see you. Leave now. I'll contact you in a while once you've landed. Landed where? Low hack, obviously. Oh, obviously. Well, how else do you think you're going to cause the scratch, idiot? Do you even have any clue what's going on? Wait, of course you don't. You are wearing pajamas and giggling at clouds like each one was shaped like the rudest bit of naked anatomy a human can recognize. No, I'm not. I mean, yes, I am wearing pretty nice pajamas, but I know a lot of things, like about the tumor, which I've already recovered. Wait, I mean, the tumor. Wait, fuck, I mean, oh, screw it. You know, the big bomb, and some other stuff like that. I am totally in the loop. Great, awesome. Now get going. So I have to cause the scratch, right? Okay, I'm done here. Talk to you in one second for me, one long, windy fucking journey for you. Okay. Hi. You let me down, Slick. Let's get down to business. Aren't you going to ask me how my journey was? No. It was long and windy, but a lot of fun. I really like flying. It's so much fun. Oh, I bet it's just the biggest fucking blast a guy can have without a pair of shame globes secured into his two trembling fists. You haven't tried it? Every douche got to fly but me. Even the cripple. May he rest in peace, I fucking guess. Huh? Wait, is that the guy who Briska killed? Oh god, you actually know about that? You know what? I give up fucking trying to understand you and her. <laughs> Why? Egbert, goddammit, will you shut your mouth and listen? Okay, but... Is... Something wrong? What? A while ago you talked to me and it sounded like you were in danger, and it sounded like some people died, but you never told me what happened. And then I got distracted by a lot of crazy stuff. Yeah, something is wrong. Or was. A bunch of us died. The end. I don't really want to talk about it. Oh, are you sure? Yes. And not just because, oh, the clock is rapidly ticking down to something we're calling the critical moment. And no, I don't know what that is, so close your reeking question, geyser, before it asks. I'm your friend, aren't I? Oh, God. Well, John, I can't handle talking about it, okay? I just got done... Uh, dealing with Gamzee, and I'm feeling pretty emotional about it, so please, no. Who is Gamzee? He was my best friend. Really? I thought Terezi was your best friend. Or wait, maybe she was your girlfriend? I forgot. My think pan, it hurts. It is presently threatening to make me its bitch, John. Is that what you want? Do you want your cool alien pal to become the bitch of a raw, throbbing think pan? Such is the scenario before us. 
Sorry, I don't mean to be nosy. I just want to know some things about your situation. I'm concerned. Gamzee was my very good friend who was this goofy, lovable bullshit clown until he went psycho and killed some people. I liked him a lot. I don't know. I guess my best friend is really just the guy who I happen to be feeling most sentimental to at the moment. Is that a fucking crime? <laughs> no. I think I know how you feel. So he killed some people, and then what? So then I... It's okay, you can tell me. John, trust me. You wouldn't understand. It's just a troll thing. Humans wouldn't get it. You might think I was a shithead, and I can't deal with that now on top of everything, so let's drop it. Hmm. Okay, if you say so. Oh! I can't believe I almost forgot. I've been dying to know since I left the battlefield. You know if Rosa's okay? Did it work? I thought I could rely on you of all people. She's fine. She woke up alive on Durs. Really? That's the rule, John. You kiss a dead player in time, and their dream self takes over, assuming they still have one. Oh, wow. It's incredible you reach God to your status without even understanding the more mundane means of resurrection available. Wait, your unfailing cluelessness makes it the opposite of incredible. My mistake. So I guess it would not have worked on my dad then, or Rose's mom? No, but that is exactly what I wanted to picture happening behind the black curtain, John. You snogging up your dead-hatted man, Lucis. Thanks for that mental image! Or Rose's adult woman, Lucis. Maybe a dead woman sweeps your senior is more your cup of sauce, since apparently you are not a homosexual. Whatever that means. Not even to speak of your race's absurd qualms with the notion of incest, which again, still sort of wondering how that could even be a thing. There. Is that your game, Egbert? Have you had your eye on Madame Lalonde and you've been waiting for a convenient resurrection opportunity to bust out your most passionate smooch motifs kept in reserve? And in front of her dead female offspring, no less. Just shameful. Well, she is a very pretty lady, but that seems like a really inappropriate thing to think about, Carcat. You don't say! What are we even talking about anymore? I don't know. I'm, I'm frankly pretty upset about finding them dead in the magic castle, and I, I guess I was wondering aloud if something could have been done, or at least maybe to talk about it without angry tirades being involved. Exactly. You were embarking down tragedy lane, and we've got to stamp that garbage out. We can't have you getting all morose while we've got so many irons in the fire. Fuck, loaded phrase, forget I said that. Just clam your shit up and forget your stupid guardian, like I did with my dear crab monster custodian, who I adored in no way whatsoever. You're being a douche. Wait, what am I saying? You're always a douche. <laughs> yes, thank you. Your dad was a crab monster? Shut the fuck up. We were talking about something important. Rose, remember? Yes. She is still on Durst with your bomb to be delivered. It will arrive safely a little later. Oh, great. How do you know it gets there? Jade told me. To do what it is you do best. Do Jade from further ahead on your timeline. Before my piece of shit clown bro made everything terrible here, she and I were hammering out these plans. I talked to her across pretty much the full spread of her timeline until the scratch starts and the feed cuts out. So I have a sense of the whole picture here, and it's my job now to put some things into motion. That's cool. It's nice to hear you're working together. I should pass through Jade and see what she's up to. You should sit your ass tight and do the fuck what I tell you the fuck to fucking do! Oh. Anyway, she and Dave do a lot of frog breeding, accelerating the process significantly by exploiting time travel, with help from me and Kanaya, since we were in charge of frog duties in our session. Frog duties? Wait, which one is Kanaya again? Don't interrupt, I'm following a train of thought. Okay, Kanaya is my other best friend, and she was the hero of space like Jade, which means she's the stoker of the forge and is basically in charge of frogs, which sounds retarded, I know. You breed the right frog to make the universe you want to make, which is a long, arduous process, and I kind of fucked it up in my game, but that's a whole other story which I'll get to later, okay? Wow, okay. She and Dave ran into Jack, which I'm sure he must have saw coming because I've never seen anyone exploit time travel so shamelessly as him. Not even Aradia. Aradia? Just another dead troll. Who cares? Hmm. Uh -huh. Stop frowning. She was already dead before she died. Hmm. Uh -huh. 
so she and Dave fought with him for a while, and long story short, he died. What? But it's fine. I guess that was his plan, like some bizarre useless last stand. Even if he didn't tell Jade, who was pretty freaked out until I talked her through it. Did she kiss him too? You are not supposed to kiss her, Mr. Noir! You're, You're supposed, supposed to, to kill her! her! Yeah, right there while Jack watched like a fucking creep. But it worked. Oh my god, Carcat. It's like your shitty shipping grid is coming true before our very eyes. <laughs> Remember when you made that ugly thing? Who gives a fuck about shipping? Or my ludicrous stranglehold over all topics concerning romance? I'm still talking. He woke up alive on Durst and met with Rose. That was the end of the line for Alpha Dave. To my knowledge, he doesn't time travel after that, and he and Rose stay on Durst waiting for the bomb until you start the scratch. But I can't see either of them because of the blackout lingering around Rose for whatever reason. Nobody knows what's up with that. Regardless, his job is to plot a course through the ring to find the sun. When he does, either he or Rose will deliver the bomb. I don't know which. Now leave, and never darken my door again. But now they don't have dream selves left. Whoever goes will be risking their life for good, won't they? That would be the logical extension of those facts, yes. This is unacceptable. Couldn't I do it? I am apparently immortal because of this god tier business, so the bomb probably wouldn't kill me. Okay, but don't you think there's a remote possibility that going on a suicide mission to save all of reality would count as a heroic death? Hmm. Maybe I could try not to be all brave while I do it? You asshole, of course you'd be brave! That tends to be what happens when you do something really fucking courageous! Yeah... I just don't want to lose anybody else's all. That's just how it is! I've lost friends for way more pointless reasons! You're all out of options here. You'd be risking death just as much as they would, and they're better qualified to handle the mission as the Durst Dreamers. Jade's dream self is dead too, so she's out. Or to be more specific, her dream self is an overly emotional dog who went off whimpering somewhere. I'm pretty sure she will be completely useless. Well, yeah. She mentioned something about that. She said she prototyped her dream self. What happened with that? She doesn't like to talk about it. Kind of a sore subject. Why? She thinks she's selfish and completely hysterical, and I guess hates that part of herself she represents. But I mean... The thing is, she just spent a long time being dead and moving on. It's not like you can just bring somebody back and expect them to give a shit about all the stuff you think is important. I tried to tell her that her sprite self is probably nowhere near as despicable as she's making out with herself to be. I, I mean, making herself out to be. You, you, you know what I mean. Look, I'm just saying, we've all got flaws, even her. And, for all the shit she's given me on this very subject, she keeps herself dangling from a very high hook. She'd be doing me a major personal solid by making at least some attempt to get herself off. Wait, fuck. Well, what did I just say? Wow. I mean, let herself off. The hook. The, the fucking hook. It's a figure of goddamn speech. Raise his eyebrows? Put those the back down before my hot acid rage breath burns them off your idiotic face! Okay, I'm putting them back down as not suggestively as possible. What were we even talking about? It wasn't this wh whatever this is. What is what this is? It's nothing, you shit! It has been the conversational equivalent of us whistling through our snort barrels while touching each other inappropriately. Was... Was that another weird erotic slip of the tongue? No, that was me being worked up into this ridiculous fucking conniption and saying something inflammatory! God, how does that not be clear by now? Okay, well, what I'm getting from this, aside from the possibility that Jade may or may not have kissed Dog Jade at some point, is that neither of them will be able to help with the bomb plan. That's exactly right! The pajama prodigy used his puzzle sponge today. Besides, Jade is responsible for other important parts of the plan. For one thing, you'll still have to wait for her to send you the code for the quills. You can't scratch the mesa without them. She got them from her denizen, or will later on her timeline, now that she lit the forge and woke the monster up. Aren't those really tough to kill, guys? Yeah. Did she kill him? Hell if I know. Her explanation of the entire encounter could be boiled down to, and I quote, shenanigans. 
limed for infuriatingly vague. <laughs> anyway, after she gives that to you, then she has to go through with the rest of the plan, which is making sure you all survive after the scratch, minus one of the Durst Dreamers, of course. The plan revolves around some really baffling hand-wavy mumbo-jumbo, which I don't really understand. But she told me to trust her about it, because the info comes from a... Reliable informant. Whitened for smug tool. It involves something to do with a yellow lawn ring. Which isn't the human word for it, it's just your word is so dumb, I feel dumb saying it. Word for what? I guess your entire escape plan somehow pivots critically around an unwatered piece of residential property? It doesn't matter what it means. Jade says she has this figured out, and I don't have time to do much but trust her. At this point, she's all booked up and all too mortal. So she won't be delivering the bomb, and neither will you. Okay, well, what about this? Since she is mortal, and I am not, sort of, and I don't need to do the scratch for a while, can I go help her? Maybe she could use some protection. Maybe that is what Dave was just trying to do, and he temporarily died. Remember, Jack is still on the loose. He has killed Rose and Dave once, and me twice. No, 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 no! Sweet, bleeding, jigus, Egbert! You keep bragging about your immortality, and then brainlessly announce plans to go off and do something heroic! You're going to have the shortest lifespan of any immortal in history! Sorry. Besides, it's a total non-issue. Jack wouldn't hesitate to stab you again, but he won't hurt Jade for some reason. If anything, you could use her protection. Really? I never noticed when looking through her timeline earlier. It wasn't until I was talking to her in those time frames and she told me. He just keeps following her around. I can see him off in the distance in some frames, just lurking there, shadowing her movements. It's incredibly disturbing. He lingers around her until the scratch begins and I lose the feed, never once doing anything threatening. She says she thinks it's because Jack inherited loyalty of her Lucis. If she's right, I guess her Lucis really did offer the most protection possible by prototyping itself, albeit by dooming us all, the idiot. Aw, oh, that's actually kinda cute. Sadly, he holds no such loyalty to any of us here. He regards us all as ripe for the repeated skewering. Oh fuck. Maybe we should have all just dressed like Jade. I can't believe this stroke of genius only occurred to me now. I don't think he'd be fooled. Dogs have a pretty good sense of smell. It was a motherfucking joke. Will you look at this mess? Anyway, it doesn't matter anymore. If we can ride out this for a little longer until the critical moment, and Dave Rose can destroy the sun, Jack shouldn't be a threat. Conveniently, if they're successful, that will signal the beginning of our own escape plan. What's your plan? Apparently, the explosion will be so huge, it will be visible at great distances through the furthest ring, even from different sessions like yours and ours. You won't get to see it because by then your session would be wiped out by the scratch. But we will. The plan is to use it as a beacon and travel there as a rendezvous point. Rendezvous with who? We've got people there. That's what Jade tells me. Jade does so many things lately. What's even her deal? Hell if I know. This is basically dream intelligence. Every time she goes to sleep, she has more to ramble about. She says I should go to sleep to find out, but I'm like, how the fuck am I supposed to be napping between making all these plans and getting persecuted by this demented honking asshole? So yeah, we'll meet in the aftermath of the explosion with our people on the inside, or I guess I should say outside? I don't think they can come with us though. Come with you where? Who are they? dead people. As for where, it's not like we're going to be sticking around there forever. That would probably be depressing since we're not fucking ghosts. The scratch will reboot your session, your whole universe actually, so somewhere in this dreadful abyss, that new session will start up in its own insiposphere from scratch. Look at that! Another pun because of using that fucking word every other sentence! Kill me now. But that from scratch effing lol, session is what you're shooting for to survive. The idea is for you all to preserve yourselves by escaping there. Through the lawn ring? Yes. Once you're there, you will help us find our way there too, and then we can all finally figure out what the fuck to do with the rest of our lives. Oh, so then this is how we're supposed to meet. That's kind of exciting. Yeah, I guess, if enough of us are alive by then to meet. So I guess you're not worried about it turning into a huge sloppy makeout fest anymore? Uh, right! 
<laughs> John, you and Briska better keep your hands to yourselves, or everyone's going to be really uncomfortable. No interspecies funny business, is that clear? Blarg, I am convincingly flipping my lid about this, waving my arms around a lot, and making all my best yelling faces. Wow, look at that. It's time to change the subject again. Huh? Poof, subject changed. If it works and you wind up in the new session, that's why it'll be important to make sure one of the Durst Dreamers stays with you, so they can help guide us there from the ring. Won't there be any other players in the new session? Like, alternate universe versions of ourselves or such? Probably? But those chumps won't know anything about us, or all our plans. Why would they? Yeah, it's just kind of a weird thought. So out of everything we just talked about, this is the thing that has you tripping globes? Whatever you say! But I guess it's sort of comforting, too. If Rose or Dave have to go off and die, at least I get to see them again, in a way. Even if I will only be Alternate Universe John to them, maybe my dad will be alive in that session, too. Okay, maybe. But before you get too excited about that, you've got to make sure you get there first. Which means you have to do what I say and stick to the plan. You need to focus on getting ready to start the scratch. The game doesn't make a hard reset that easy to pull off. Once you initiate it, the game throws everything it's got at you. Which is one reason you're the best guy for the job, because of your superpowers and silly, windy bullshit. Okay, I'll do my best. What should I do right now? Get prepared, make all the equipment you think you'll need, stay out of trouble. Wait for Jade to send that code, wait for me to contact you for the first time, and do your best to humor him while he ignorantly attempts to flame you back into the puddle of slime you crawled out of. Please. Oh man, our first conversation ever? I can't wait. Yeah! But can I just say something in my defense before it happens? I don't actually hate you, and I never did. I was deluding myself. Deep down, I'm pretty sure I was always pretty okay with you. Thanks, Garkat. It wasn't a fucking compliment.